Hello students. So today we will discuss a new topic that is the periodic table. Uh, as I said, it is a very important topic for you, and I want to show you this topic in details. That's why uh, I will show you this topic in something different manner. Okay, so that it will be very clear to you. So just now we will start the topic, listen it carefully, and go through the topic very deeply. So let's start. earlier already we have discussed about matter so matter consists of tiny particles called atoms there are 92 different kinds of atoms exist in nature this nugget of gold contains only gold atoms in it so we can call it as an element so what is an element an element is a substance made up of similar kind of atom. Zooming it back again, we can find the same nugget of gold again with only one kind of gold atom. So it is an element. Similarly, if we zoom up a lump of silver, it also contains only silver atoms in it. So it is also an element. Because there are 92 kinds of atoms, there are also 92 kinds of elements too. You probably have heard about some elements like carbon, iron, aluminium and so on. These many elements are very difficult to remember. But do not worry, fortunately, scientists have discovered a simple way to identify the elements and they are placed in a tabular form. We call it as periodic table. By the help of periodic table, we can identify all the elements very quickly. This is a periodic table. It starts with the element which is very lightest that is the hydrogen. So as I said hydrogen is placed on the top in the periodic table by representing with the symbol H and with the number 1 we call it as atomic number. We can see the second lightest element in the top right that is helium He with atomic number 2. Similarly, the third lightest element is lithium which is in the second row. with atomic number 3 and this row ends with neon with atomic number 10. So how many rows are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. So there are 7 horizontal rows in a periodic table. We can also call it as periods. What about these? These are lanthanides and actinides. Well, they are really belong to the group 6th and 7th. 57 to 71 lanthanide and 89 to 103 actinides. If we will join it to the periodic table, it will make the periodic table little bit wider. So this is actually the periodic table is. 
so how many elements are there in the first row 2 then 8 then 8 then 18 again 18 32 and 32 so combinedly there are 118 elements placed in a periodic table But now you might have thinking earlier I said there are 92 elements. Yes, do not get confused. There are actually 92 elements exist in nature and rest all elements are invented by the scientist in laboratories. That is of around 1940. So these all elements are artificial. So we can say there are 92 natural elements in periodic table and rest all artificial elements. So let's see the earlier table which is more convenient to fit on the screen. Now you can see the vertical columns. We can call them group. So how many groups are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, up to 18. So there are 18 groups in a periodic table. And remember, elements of each group show similar properties. That is, the group 1 elements except hydrogen have similar kind of properties and we can name it as alkali metals. Number 2 Alkaline Earth Metals Number 17 Halogens and Number 18 Nobel Gases You will have detailed study about this in your higher class. Now you can read the periodic table very easily. I will ask some question now. What is the name of the element with atomic number 30? Yes, it is zinc. What is the atomic number of calcium? It is 20, just written above. Sulfur belongs to the period 3. Choose any element in 5th row. Any element name you can write, it is your choice, which is in 5th row or we can call it as 5th period. Then from which group chlorine is? It is from the group 17. Choose any element from group 15, any of the name of the element you can write, it is your choice. So what is the name of an element in period 5 and group 2? Serenium SR. So see how easy it is to read the periodic table. Just you have to remember the groups and periods. Now can you see the light color boxes which splits the periodic table into left side metals and right side non-metals. Let's talk about metals. So these are some metals. You can notice these are some metals which are shiny and solid except sodium and mercury which are not solid. So what is the property of metal? It is solid and shiny. Again, it can conduct electricity. Can you see the bulb glowing? Yes, it is a good conductor of heat and electricity. Metals are shiny, solid and they are good conductors of heat and electricity. Again, now metals are also malleable. That is, they can be flattened into sheet. You can see here the aluminium foil. This is a metal it is a 
thin sheet it can conduct heat and electricity and it is shining so now we can read the matters it is towards the left hand side in the periodic table what about the non metal they are generally liquid or gases with some exception like carbon carbon is actually solid here we are taking a non metal you can see the bulb is not glowing that means it is a bad conductor again when we are beating it it we cannot draw it into thin sheet it is brittle metals are malleable non metals are brittle okay so where is the osmium yes so osmium is a metal where is the iodine it is towards the right hand side it is the non metal uranium it is towards the left hand side that means it is a metal but remember it is not so shiny then also it is a metal it is an exception what about phosphorus it is a non metal but remember it is also an exception that it can conduct electricity but it is a non metal what about these boxes see these elements have both the property of metals and non metals they are brittle like non metals but they can conduct electricity like metals so we can name that as semi metals or metalloids which have both the properties of metals and non metals now you can see the metals non metals and metalloids these are the metals and towards the right hand side there are non metals and towards the middle the light color is metalloid now what about hydrogen hydrogen is the most abundant gas present in atmosphere but in the periodic table we can mark that hydrogen hydrogen is not belongs to any of the group that is it is neither a metal nor a non metal and it is also not a metalloid it has its unique property that is it do not belong to any of the group in some periodic table you can also mark that hydrogen is placed separately so do not get confused in that hydrogen has its unique property that is it do not belong to any of the group that is neither it is a metal non metal or metalloid remember this hydrogen has its unique feature so i think students now you are quite acquainted with periodic table metals non metals metalloids about the groups about the periods in the periodic table so now you can learn it again more details you will read in your higher class this is the introductory class to periodic table so learn nicely and enjoy the video